Ciao, and welcome to the Frontier Space Podcast, a dialogue about how space technology and exploration are transforming our solar system. Welcome to the Frontier Space Podcast, Laszlo. Thank you very much for the invitation. I was, uh, our things in the family in Notre Dame in Chicago. It's very good. It's good. My family's spread over Europe, US, uh, Taiwan. So we are quite international family. So, well, uh, congratulations on a successful career researching material physics, biophysics, electronics, and a lot. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. I think everything is is uh, concentrated around quantum metaphysics, you know, and this is my my passion and profession, actually. And um, uh, I don't know if you know Ed Witten, and uh, he was writing. You know, Ed Witten is a, one of the the most famous physicists. Uh, he's uh, leader of the string theory at Princeton, and uh, uh, in the preface to a book of, of history of, of physics, written by a Hungarian author, and his name is Karol Shimonyi. He is um, the father of Charles Shimonyi, who is the founder of Microsoft. And uh, uh, Ed Witten wrote that at this stage, it is pretty clear that Quantum metaphysics will continue to be interesting for a long time, in part because of the continuing ability to fabricate new materials and probe old materials in new ways. So this is actually uh, my whole career. So I was making new materials and studying old materials with new methods. Nice. So, um... Reading over your impressive study from 2015, and was wondering if you could share more about what you guys discovered with methyl ammonium lead iodide perovskites. Mm -hmm. uh, this material was an old material. Actually, it was uh, synthesized first time by Dieter Weber at Stuttgart University, and he was an organic chemist, and he made this material. But this material uh, was... Uh, a semiconductor, you shine light on it, it creates electrons. So it was interesting for people who were studying optoelectronics. But the interest faded out very rapidly. Then in the early 90s, it came back because it's perovskite, the same structure as the high temperature superconductors, the cuprates, discovered in 1986 by Alex Miller and George Bednard and mobilized uh, a year later. And people were interested to find um, perovskites, which could be also uh, high temperature superconductors. And one of the leader, leaders was, was uh, they emitted IBM, the octane heights, but actually it didn't give superconductivity. And the interest faded out once again. Until 2010, 2012, when uh, Henry Snade, at Oxford University published a paper uh, that this material is good for photovoltaics. It can create an efficiency above 10%. What is an efficiency? To convert light energy into electric energy. So photons into current. And so 10% was a kind of a, a psychological threshold. If it's above that, it means it's interesting for applications. And a lot of research started uh, at that time, including my lab. And nowadays, the efficiency is 25%. You know, this is quite amazing. It's a very simple material. It, it, uh, it doesn't require a lot of investment, uh, uh, high tech. And one can make solar cells, uh, which reach efficiency of 25%. So it's amazing. But my research was. Uh, oriented in other directions to use whether we can uh, uh, have something else as application, not just solar cells. Because in Lausanne, I was working for 30 years in 
in Lausanne at the Swiss Federation of Technology. In French, it's called Ecole Politique Federale de Lausanne. And uh, there is a leading guy in photovoltaics. Uh, his name is Michael Gretzel. And he was doing the solar cells, and I was doing something else. And due to the fact that uh, shining light, you know, shining photons, and photons means not only visible light, but also X-rays, uh, gamma rays, uh, high energy photons. One can generate these photoelectrons, uh, and the electrons could be used for detection purposes. Because if one measures the current, one can scale to the dose of the radiation, or that current produced by high energy photons, we could also use for electrical purposes. So this was the, the main idea. And um, I think the, the 2015 paper is about X-rays, right? X-ray conversion. I don't recall exactly, exactly. but X-rays, uh, a few years later, we published also with, with gamma rays, even with neutrons. So the initial idea is that these photoelectrons we can measure and use for detection. And um, that, in that paper, um, let me just recall. So yes, yes, the X-ray could be used for energy conversion. And uh, where do we have uh, energy, well, these high energy photons? We have in uh, nuclear reactors. Uh, we have in outer space. We have in X-ray imaging machines in hospitals. And this material could be used for all those purposes. Is it long enough, the introduction? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's a world of possibility that um, mm -hmm. you guys have really taken deep dive into. Um, and with um, with your experiment, it looks like you guys um, deposited the the crystals with a spin coating, a vacuum pump, and a plunger. And then, uh, and this X ray source generator. Um, yes, you yeah. know, so the, the beauty of this material that uh, uh, one can grow uh, beautiful single crystals. You know, for basic studies, we need, we use uh, single crystals, uh, but one can also make wires, even nano wires. You know? Actually, we discovered my team, either a team of very talented chemists uh, in my laboratory. And uh, they could really develop uh, the fabrication of wires, nano wires of this material. And this is quite surprising because these perovskites uh, have isotopic structure. And uh, the fact that in this isotopic structure, somehow you can determine a direction in which these wires grow, this was quite new in the, in the literature. And uh, these different, different textures, so nanowires, uh, thin films, crystals, uh, microwires, uh, 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 we could use for different purposes. So that was the goal. And uh, for our, most of our studies, we use either nanowires or, or thin crystals. From time to time, we use also thin films, but it wasn't really our our practice nice it was um pretty cool to learn you guys also used an oscilloscope to measure the turnover frequency I think. oh yes yes you know this this is this is important what is the reaction time you know uh of the material and uh, it's, it's very rapid so um this is also one of the characteristics of the, of the sample yeah. It, is this um like a similar experimental setup for the gamma ray experiment too? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, this research uh, didn't require a sophisticated uh, infrastructure, so uh, that was also one of the advantage of, of this research. Yes, yes. But, um, 
So if I, if I can go for, uh, uh, further with this, this topic. So this is what we use, it's that, that, that uh, we have shown that this material can convert gamma rays into photoelectrons. So one can use it for energy conversion. I think this was the, the title of the paper that that efficient extra energy conversion is. But as I said, um, it's not, not only uh, electron uh, or photon irradiation, photo illumination can create, uh, but also the electrons, you know, or or even neutrons can, with neutron irradiation, we can also create photoelectrons. It's a bit more complicated, but it's also a possibility. So this material is suitable for for energy conversion or a, a detection for a very broad range of of uh, of photons or particles. So this is the beauty. And um, so one is the energy conversion, uh, second is the health issue. And also uh, we can think about homeland security because if you can detect gamma rays, you know, uh, high energy gamma rays for neutrons, then it's important for also for homeland security. Yes. Look like um, you guys observed a, a really high charge collection efficiency of 75% uh, of yes. the electrons converted to current. Yes, yes. So, so we have shown all, all the aspects, uh, all the advantages of this material, and also uh, we, we have seen uh, time stability, you know that it's stable in time, and we have a uh, uh, high conversion efficiency, and also it can be used as shielding material, you know, because of, probably because of the, of the lead content, uh, it shields uh, from high energy irradiation also. Because you, 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 well, if you have your screen, my publication list, uh, you, you could see that we have also paper on on um, on using this material in nuclear reactors. Uh, this is, I think, it's a maybe a twenty twenty paper. We have shown that that uh, um, it could in nuclear reactors. It can also uh, detect or or use the high flux of gamma rays, you know, in nuclear reactor when the excited uh, uh, nuclei decay, they emit a large amount of, of gamma rays. And uh, these gamma rays can convert, uh, could be converted into electrons. So even nuclear reactors, we can use this, this material for uh, detection purposes or for energy production. Amazing. This is uh, one of the first materials I've heard that could risk such energy. Yeah. But has anyone yeah. tested this material near a nuclear reactor yet? Yeah, we did in our paper. So uh, I worked with Hungarian colleagues. I had in my laboratory in Lausanne postdocs uh, from Hungary and also I worked being Hungary origin, you know, I have a very good relation with colleagues in Budapest, and and the technical university there is a experimental uh, 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 nuclear reactor, and actually we, we tested. So all the tests what we have put in the paper are coming from this reactor. Yes. Nice. Um, also noticed. We could potentially detect leaks with uh, these um, lead lead iodide perovskites. Uh, detect leaks. Yes, leaks of radiation. Oh yes, because if if, if, uh, if something is leaking, you, uh, you you can use those those uh, those uh, gamma rays or X rays, whatever, for. Uh, uh, 
electron conversion, so photon to electron conversion, and the electrons we can measure with a simple, you know, a device. We can measure the resistivity of the of our detector, and uh, if we detect a current, it means there is irradiation which is hitting our detector. Yes. Yes. Is there, you know, a uh, a group that's helping commercialize and and integrate well, these materials? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, what is uh, really uh, interesting is the gamma ray detection, these high energy gamma rays, and uh, there is a, a company near Geneva. Uh, which is working on the development of this material into uh, gamma ray detectors because usually gamma ray detectors are very expensive. You know, so, uh, uh, and uh, but we, one can make using this uh, this metal metal uh, uh, metal lead uh, halides. You know, so it could iodine, uh, bromine, or or chlorine. We can use for uh, for this purpose also. So for for a cheap gamma ray detection, and this is this is the the intention, the, the project plan of this company near Geneva. And my former chemists, they they, they were employed by this this company, and they are I think progressing very well. Awesome, we'll have to check them out. Cool. Um, yeah, we, we're wondering with uh, on the space based side of things with uh, yeah. with such a yeah. high photon absorption coefficient and and beam stopping power, uh, yeah. the perovskites, uh, you know, should should. Would it make sense to go with these uh, methyl lead iodide perovskites or another material? No, I think uh, we, should, we should test. You know how efficient is uh, would be these materials uh, in um, uh, space exploration because uh, our our conjecture is that covering the walls and you know, outer walls of the, the shuttle with this, you know, in some configuration, some architecture. You know, we are not engineers, so. I think uh, the the architecture uh, should be elaborated by engineers. Uh, if one uh, uh, covers uh, with this material, then uh, the incoming high energy cosmic rays can convert could be used for making electricity, and at the same time uh, the the composition also protects that these uh, high energy uh, photons get into. The space shuttle uh, into the shuttle where eventually people are living. Nice. Yeah, we were doing some research and noticed that that these uh, the, the lead iodide perovskites were tested a few times in space on Missy with Aegis Aerospace and uh, um, there's this Birds Four project for twenty one with JAXA. It's cool. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we uh, we submitted the. I propose the European Space Agency, but uh, actually uh, it didn't work out. I think some some Japanese colleagues, you know, were faster than we were. But I don't know in what stage is that research. Maybe uh, since I'm now at Notre Dame at, in the States, so uh, I can relaunch, you know, this project with American partners. Um, yeah, the data isn't publicly available, um, but, you know, the, um, it, it looks like the cadmium telluride looks quite promising too. Yeah, but it's very expensive, you know, it's very expensive, the cadmium telluride, you know, a, a crystal, I don't know, so one cubic centimeter is about $3,000. It seems to me that it's, it's very expensive. Yes. But uh, you know this this material, uh, uh, metal aluminum lead uh, iodide, uh, is as efficient 
or, or if probably even more than cadmium telluride. Um, okay. I was noticing that the, um, similar research says the cadmium telluride can be manufactured at less than a dollar per watt, eventually at uh, six cents per kilowatt. So potentially passing silicon PV cells in, uh, in a probability. Uh, might be, you know, might be. I, I have to check that report. You know, I don't have the equivalent number for, for our perovskite. So how much would be the cost of one kilowatt? It looks like the um, cadmium telluride is really uh, globally produced with large market. And these folks, Toledo Solar is a um, really leading manufacturer. With uh, yeah. a 12% conversion efficiency. Like. How much? 12% was what they achieved. Yeah. Um, there were some space-based demos too, it looked like. Yeah. There was a CubeSat in low Earth orbit and um, with cadmium telluride and there's some UK researchers. Yeah, it looks it looks promising. It's good. It's good. It's promising. But they, um, it, there wasn't that similar. Um, I'm not sure about whether it, it's efficiency for the gamma rays as well. Yes. But just the this band gap ionization energy chart here. It looks similar. Who knows there might be a whole host of other materials too. So mm -hmm. um yeah, but it looks like your methyl iodide had um uh, was able to withstand a really high dose of radiation around 200 times that on the ISS. Yes, and uh, we also demonstrated that uh, uh, quite easily we can make big crystals out of this so uh, it's material. And um, one of the papers uh, published 2000, 2021, I guess, 2021, that we could make uh, a thousand uh, cubic centimeters. Crystal. So this is, you know, this is three point eight kilograms. The weight, you know, this is, I think, unique. And yeah. so. nice. Um, and it, I think you mentioned it was a it was product and result from the ionic bonding of of the material. How it's uh, we, we don't know really, I mean, why is this so efficient? Uh, the photon to electron conversion. Because uh, if you one replaces lead, I think the efficiency drops for the thin uh, efficiency drops. Um, but uh, certainly, I mean, uh, one, one can uh, easily excite those electrons to the conduction band and to evacuate two electrodes. Yeah, I, um, we get really excited when when we uh, came across your paper, and you know, there's like this, there's this whole soft X-ray background, and, and in space, and throughout the this multiverse, and um, yes, you know, really high energy bands, and yeah. all this cosmic radiation that's kind of ambient free energy. Yeah. Looks like it's a 30 kilovolt average X-ray background. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them from these supermassive black holes. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. Um, yeah, you start to wonder about how, you know, which materials any of us led perovskites that, that could be, you know, help harvest this energy. These gamma ray bursts and everything. <laughs> Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, it could be a direction of future research, future research you know, I didn't think it over. Uh, and, the, like, with, um, you know, like, really down the road with um, the type of architectures and, like, like mega structures with the Dyson spheres and something. It, yes, you know, but uh, as always the case, it is a question of of, of interest and 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 uh, budget. You know. uh, uh, are the funding agencies are eager to invest money in this uh, type of research, this direction, or not? Because uh, the the research is certainly, I mean, driven by by the the financing yeah. and. Uh, so whether DOE, I think, um, or other funding, NSF, other funding agencies are really interested in this direction. Yeah, the, the nuclear reactor route sounds promising too. Yes, yes. Uh, well, glad to help support the mission you guys are on. Yeah. And, uh, keep up the great research over there. Uh, what the future holds. So. Yeah. Very good call. So uh, we'll keep in touch. Right.